Hello again everybody, Chris Anderson from Mount Comfort RV. Took in a really nice used coach. I want to take the opportunity to show it to you. This is one of those that I can assure you of one thing, will not last long. Um, it's a beautiful 2008 Winnebago Adventure. This is a 35A floor plan, so three slide outs. Uh, this coach has about 60,000 miles on it. It is on a workhorse chassis with an Allison five-speed transmission. That's an 8.1 liter um, Chevy engine, 340 horsepower for those of you keeping score at home. Um, this is a one owner coach. I actually sold this to them back in 2008 um, and they've loved it and taken care of it and they made me promise to find a good owner for it. Um, and they came back in and traded RVs again so we're ready to uh, uh, find a new home for this one um, obviously full body paint um, which in 2008 uh, was not all that common uh, it was out there but certainly most gas uh, motorhomes did not have that um, so you do have the Alcoa aluminum rims 22 and a half inch uh, tires on there same same as a diesel platform would have you even have side cameras, which again in 2008, uh, backup cameras were certainly common, side cameras were not. This is Winnebago's very top of the line gas unit. Uh, the Adventurer um, you know, was above the Voyage, it was above the Sights here, above the Vista. Um, this was their top of the line. It would have been very difficult to find a nicer gas motor home in 2008. This is just, this was the absolute top of the line. So we'll go over some of the exterior features here. I already mentioned the side cameras and the Chevy chassis and the um, Alcoa aluminum rims. We also have a metal wrap power awning. We can go up and, and catch that. Tented windows. And we'll start looking at some storage here. Now you can see here there's actually pass-through storage. If we can get that camera down there far enough, that goes up and over the frame rails for some pass-through storage. Come back a compartment. Lots to see in here, a uh, little bit more storage, but you do have your water pump there as well, uh, easy winterization. And then this is a little Winnebago thing. Um, this is part of their outside entertainment package. And the way this works, you have your outside entertainment here. Take that down. AM, FM, CD, stereo right here. I'm gonna shut this door. And then this little table fits right over that. Um, you can set up a little TV there, set up the margarita mixer there, whatever floats your boat. You do have outside power here and a 12 volt charger as well. Moving on, our propane tank is right here. And then one of the things with Winnebago is this belly air conditioner system. This is a two ton residential heat pump air conditioner mounted in the basement as opposed to on the roof. Back in my days of selling these, because obviously I was selling these new, um, this was something I would, I could spend a half an hour talking about because it's really a great setup. Um, Winnebago had to go away from it in later days. Um, I can tell you why if you want to call in, but, the, but it wasn't because of performance of this unit. Um, Two-ton residential heat pump air conditioner mounted in the basement instead of on the roof. Um, get your center of gravity a little lower, uh, which is nice. Um, so, and there's lots of other benefits. We'll get into that when we get inside. As we come around to the back, we do have a 5,000 pound tow hitch, beautiful rear cap. Look at the molded, uh, molded rear cap. Like I said, 5,000 pound tow hitch, nice ladder to get up on the roof. Your camera's molded into the cap up there, which is nice. Okay, moving right along. The generator's running right now. There it is, this is the 5500 Marquee Gold Series Onan Generator. Now the 5500 is different than the 4000. Obviously, first of all, it puts out more power, um, enough to power two roof air conditioners, or in this case, one big belly air conditioner. But the other thing um, with this is it does have the onboard diagnostics. So if there ever is a problem with this generator, it quits running for any reason. Um, you can uh, hit the button on there, it'll give you the onboard diagnostics, just like your check engine light on your car, um, kind of tells the mechanic what's wrong with it. Same thing here. We have a 50 amp shore power cord. Um, and then this nice little feature here, you open up these two little tabs, pop that down and your cord can go right in there and you can still shut your door with your cord, your door shuts and locks completely with the cord having easy access in and out. When you're done, you lock this back up no critters can get in there. Moving right along. 
All right, our wet bay. This has a whole house water filtration set up in it. Um, this also has um, your gray tanks are enclosed in this space here. Same thing, your sewer hose can be ported out right through there, just like that, which is nice. Hot and cold water and a black tank flush if things start to get a little funky. On all the Winnebago cabinet doors and their compartment doors and their drawers, there's a little number here. Winnebago makes all of this themselves and you can call up any Winnebago dealer, give them that part number. They know the year, make, model, which compartment door it is, which two colors or three colors of paint were used on the compartment door. It makes life really easy. Fuel fill is here. Hot water is behind this door. Okay, we're inside of our 2008 Winnebago Adventure 35A. Um, if you're noticing, I might be in different attire than I was. Last time we had a little technical difficulty. Tony forgot to put film in the camera. Rookie mistake, but <laughs> we'll forgive him. And um, we'll, we'll do the inside uh, uh, take two, we'll say. Uh, I think um, one of the things we always try to do uh, when, we, when we remember is show you the coach with the slide rooms in instead of you know everybody likes to show them with the slide rooms out and isn't it great isn't it roomy but obviously these coaches are used quite a bit going down the road as well and you want to know that it's going to be fully functional so in addition to our drivers and passenger seats we have a nice sofa here that does have seat belts underneath it um, you come back look at the aisleway here you know, I'm not a small guy. I go about 225, um, and uh, uh, I can get right through here. There's a lot of space, and we are fully closed up. Slides are in. I can obviously get right here, get to my favorite place, the refrigerator, um, and also into the restroom area back here, and even to back here where the stool is, and back to the bed, queen size bed, and easily lay down, take a little nap if I wanted to after reading the refrigerator. So. Um, easy access all the way through this coach. Now give us just a second, let's get this opened up and uh, we'll show you how it looks fully expanded. Okay, the slides are open up, but before we get there, let's go over the driver passenger area a little bit. This is Winnebago's top of the line gasoline coach, um, and they made a lot of gasoline coaches. Uh, so, so let's talk about some of the things up in the driver passenger area that separate it from most of what you see. And, and a lot of this stuff, um, your entry level coaches today, 10 years later, don't have. So uh, let's go over that. Well, first of all, one of these is tough to see. Sorry, this light's gonna mess with the camera. I apologize. There's a driver's side door there with a power window. I have to take you to a $400,000 coach on this lot to get you a power driver's window. When you're paying tolls, going down a toll road, stopping to pay tolls, those sliding windows with the screen in there, pain in the butt. Power window, nice feature. You never see it on gas coaches. And this is a door, so this door opens up. You can bail out, put some gas in, jump back in without ever having to step out of uh, this area up here. So that's, that's a nice feature. You don't see that very often anymore. Um, we do have over here, these control switches here are for these blinds up front here. There we go. Look at that. So many coaches, even still today, have a, like a sun visor out of a 1974 Buick that, that pulls down here. It's always falling down in your eyes. It's never at the right angle. And you can't, you have to darn near stand up in the driver's seat to reach it. Now that's not the case here. These are actually electric uh, visors. So when you're headed into the sun, you can get the sun out of your eyes. It's obviously a great safety feature, but also a uh, wonderful, convenient feature. Um, these are HWH auto leveling jacks, the control panels right here. When you're ready to level, all you do is hit the level button and uh, it it does the rest. The coach has 60,220 miles on it. Um, that red light on the dash is not any type of a check engine light or anything. That just indicates that the parking brake is set, which it is, so that's good. Uh, this is the RV radio that uh, Winnebago uh, really was ahead of their time on. Um, lots of features on here. AM, FM, CD, stereo, things that you would expect. But one of my favorites on here was actually the weather band. It has this button right here. And no matter where you're at in the continental United States, you hit the weather band button and you're gonna get the local weather forecast. So if the weather starts to look a little scary outside, hey, was that a funnel cloud? Um, you know, you can, you can hit the button and uh, either give yourself some peace of mind or realize that it, it might be over. Um, so workhorse chassis we have a nice low hump right here so the Ford chassis is a taller hump the workhorse is is a little lower this is a uh, 340 horse engine V8 Chevy uh, five-speed Allison transmission to go uh, along with that has a sharper turning radius than the Ford which is nice when you're trying to maneuver through tighter areas uh, so that's nice you do um, have two cup holders here in the center you have a passenger cup holder over here and then I like this as well 
your passenger, not only do you have power plugs down here for 110 volt, 12 volt, whatever, but you also have a nice workstation here. This locks in the opposition. You want to put your laptop, your tablet, your sandwich, you know, whichever. Put that right here. Um, it, it's nice and easy to access and comes back out of your way. So there's some features up in the driver passenger area. Now let's cover the front storage. It seems like whenever I don't open one single cabinet, somebody comments on it. So we're going to try to get them all. This coach has no leaks, no funky smells, nice little storage up here. Up in this compartment up here, this is where um, you would put like your satellite receiver if you decide to go with a satellite system on here. Somebody's upgraded the TV to high definition. Um, over here, this actually has the uh, DVD um, home theater system in it as well. Um, this is kind of an old school switch box. Really, that's not going to work with these newer TVs, um, nor would you want it to. So um, they work better. Uh, the, uh, the TVs work better without that. So that's the good news. And we have some storage up here as well. All right, moving into the center of the coach here. Have a nice chair here. Now, when, you, when you're dealing with a 30 or a 32 foot coach, you're not gonna get a nice comfortable third chair here. I mean, obviously you have your drivers and passenger seats that do rotate around, but your third chair here, and this one being a nice comfortable recliner, is something you really gotta get to about a 35 foot motorhome to see that. Uh, so this, this has it in there. Um, new, uh, Winnebago exclusive. Easy Rest Sofa. Now, this is something Winnebago makes themselves, so you won't see this on any of the competitors' products. A couple things that happen here. First of all, when you're sitting in this, you can recline it down to whatever point you want to and, and be, um, you know, ho however far relaxed, even all the way to laying flat. But the other thing it does is it makes it into a true queen size bed. We'll open this up, this pulls up. And then when you run that all the way down, this all comes together, it's one big queen size bed. Uh, it's actually very comfortable. Uh, this is one of the most comfortable sleeping options uh, offered in RVs today. So um, nice feature, Winnebago exclusive. Moving back, let's go to another Winnebago exclusive, the Benchmark Dinette. You may say, boy, everybody makes a booth. You're right, everybody makes a booth, but nobody makes a booth like this. Most of them have that piece of cardboard covered in fabric that's just tacked on here and goes down in an L shape here and it's falling off because as you scoot out it, it's going to fall off. Um, most of the cushions are laying over, they're, they're flat, you know, the cushions are doing this stuff because they're, they're not sitting right, they're not fitted into the back of the booth like that and they're certainly not all steel framed in here. When you look at this, this is all steel in here, not one by twos, not plywood, not Luan. Also, the bottom of the seat cushion, these are sinuous springs in the bottom of the seat cushion. It's built like real furniture. You have seat belts forward and rear facing. Nobody else is doing this. This is Winnebago stuff. So um, that's, that's a wonderful feature. They even gave you an outlet right here next to the table. So if you want to plug in a computer or something like that, you certainly can. All right, let's cover the cabinets on the slide room here. There's a lot of them. Notice they all have two individual metal struts on here that hold the door up. They're not the cheap little plastic struts or they're not missing altogether, which happens a lot of times when manufacturers are looking to save a buck. That's what they'll do. That bag has all the owner's manuals in it from Winnebago Industries. So you can see that this is all open from compartment to compartment. So if you do have longer items, uh, they will fit in here as well. All right move over to the kitchen area. Um, the 35A floor plan was famous for its kitchen. Um, people that like to cook a lot like this floor plan. This has a lot of counter space, a lot of little uh, neat things in the kitchen. Let's cover the upper half first. Let's take a look at the cabinets. We have adjustable shelves there. Nice little cubby up here for, I, I would think, spices, but I'll tell you what, if you buy it, I don't care what you put there. Um, and then over here as well, more adjustable cabinetry. All right. Now we get down into some of my more favorite features. We actually have two little appliance garages here. There's an outlet in the one on the left. Nice little area for those things that you might use on a regular basis, but you don't want them sitting out on the counter. Maybe a coffee maker, toaster, whatever. All right, we have a three burner cooktop here. There is a small little crack in this piece of Corian right there. We'll get that glued back on there. It won't be perfect, but it also won't be real noticeable. It is a used coach. It's not gonna be perfect but it is gonna function. All right, now look at this. How about that for some extra countertop space? Take a look at all the solid surface countertop throughout. If you were in here preparing a meal, you've got a lot of space to work. 
All right, I'm gonna push this back in. You just kind of lift and push. There we go. And then I have storage down here. Over under the stove here, we actually have three full extension ball bearing drawer glide drawers. Isn't that nice and smooth? And then over here, we have a little chop cutting board. And then three more drawers. So there's six drawers in the kitchen that are sizable, easy to use. This is not a drawer, this is a fold down. Nice spot under here, I'm thinking garbage can. All right, under mount sink, stainless steel. Even a filtered water dispenser right here. And I like this nice little hutch back here. It's lit, I don't know what I'd put there. What really matters though is what you'd put there. Um, take a look up at the ceiling, all the indirect lighting. They did a nice job with this. Again, this is their top of the line, so you're gonna see a, a lot of uh, features you don't normally see in RVs. Have a fantastic fan right in the middle of the kitchen area here, so if uh, dinner gets a little too done, um, we can clear this area out pretty quickly in here and uh, uh, make that smell go away. All right, as we move into the center of the coach, I want to show you right here. Our circuit breakers, it's not a little cheap piece of plastic on the side of your bed um, covering up your circuit breakers. This is actually a metal panel, just like residential, and something that nobody does, the 12 volt fuses are not fuses, they're actually circuit breakers. Uh, again, people aren't doing this today. This is something that Winnebago's been doing forever, um, and, and most companies aren't doing that today. So, nice feature. Um, your light switches are all labeled as to what they are. You don't have to guess. You know, it's funny, most of the RVs, they're not labeled at all. Or worse yet, you have the little switch and you have to reach up to the ceiling every time to turn it off and on with, instead of having a wall switch. So, better idea there. Turn around here, this is the titanium touch stainless, so it doesn't really fingerprint. Magnets will stick to it. This is a four-door refrigerator with an ice maker. Look at all that. Very clean, again, no funky smells in this coach. This was well cared for, it's a one owner coach. So that's, that's good news. Moving right to the center. Um, this is what uh, Winnebago actually calls this the one place center. So I'm um, gonna go over these controls relatively quickly for you. And then if you have questions, call me. Up at the top, this is our um, electric side of our hot water heater. That's how you turn on the electric side of the water heater. Um, you come down here to turn on the gas side of the water heater. Water pump on and off, generator start right here. Um, generator has 1600 hours on it, but it was recently gone through by uh, Cummins own end, um, and it is in good health. Um, it's running right now, by, by the way, and it's very, uh, very quiet. This is our power line energy management system. The energy management system was designed to keep you under a particular amperage when you're in the campground. So uh, let's say you're plugged into a 30 amp service and you want to turn a bunch of stuff on. Well, this is going to keep you under 30 amps by shutting things strategically off. Um, and you don't even know it's doing it. It just does it. For instance, it can turn the water heater off. Well, just because your water heater goes off while you're using a heavy amp load doesn't mean your water cools off. Uh, first of all, you have two uh, possibilities there. Um, you know, the water heater will hold hot water for several hours, number one. Number two, you can always heat your water with, uh, with propane as well. Um, it'll turn off the compressor on AC, um, AC compressor number two, I should say. Um, that means AC compressor number one is still running and then you're still blowing cold air through the entire ductwork. So it just a little less cold air when the compressor is shut down. It'll turn down your fan speed. It'll even turn off your refrigerator, which that's why you always keep your refrigerator in automatic mode because it will automatically switch over to propane. So it can shut all these things off when you're under a heavy amp load. You're, you know, somebody's blow drying their hair, somebody's running the microwave, the TV's on, the toaster's going, and, and you're on a 30 amp service. Man, you're gonna, that would put you way over 30 amps if all these things were on, but this shuts them off systematically. Um, when the amp, when the hair dryer shuts off, the microwave shuts off, the, the amp load drops, it actually turns those things back on. The thing I love about the power line energy management system is you never had to touch it. It just works. So good thing. All right. Stepping down one more step, we have the digital, not not you know three series of lights to tell you how, how much voltage is in your batteries. We actually have a, a house battery and engine battery digital readout there, which that's nice. Um, then we do have the uh, tank monitoring system. These are probeless tank monitors. So on the outside of the holding tanks, you have little ultrasonic sensors adhered to the tank, as opposed to having probes that penetrate the tank. Probes that penetrate the tank are one more opportunity to leak. And they are also 
um, they're going to get gunked up over time. There's all kinds of stuff in the in those tanks, especially the black one, um, and that stuff can get stuck to probes and be icky, for lack of a better word. Um, and uh, that doesn't happen on on these type of uh, holding tank monitors. Kind of a residential setup on the thermostat here. In fact, it's kind of a residential um, heating system. We'll go over that a little bit more. Um, but on your thermostat side of things, the thing you need to know is you have a um, electric heat, which is your heat pump. Um, if it's too cold for that, we'll automatically call on the gas heat, which is the propane uh, furnace to run, which is what we have going today because it's kind of chilly outside. And of course you have um, air conditioning and your fan speed is controlled on here as well. And then step down one final step, we have the inverter control. Your inverter is what takes 12 volt DC battery current and changes it into 110 volt AC current. This one is what we call an entertainment um, inverter. It's gonna be used for like running your TVs and stuff like that. So if you're just parked overnight, you don't wanna run the generator, you just wanna watch the news and go to bed, you can turn on your inverter, watch your TVs off your inverter, turn it back off, go to bed, and you'll still be fine. So um, let's talk about heating and cooling system a little bit. One of the things that I always used, I, I used to sell this product new. In fact, I sold this product new. Um, and one of the things that I always spent a lot of time on was the Winnebago cooling system. And, and what it is, I, sh I should just say the Winnebago HVAC system. There's a two ton residential heat pump air conditioner in the basement, okay? Um, puts out more cold air than what two rooftop air conditioners would. It uses less energy. It can only pull a maximum of 24 amps where two rooftop air conditioners can go way over 30 amps. So, um, and pop your 30 amp circuit breaker at the post. This won't do that because it can only pull a maximum of 24 amps. It, it has a heat pump built in. So it's a heat pump and an air conditioner. So that's good. And the heat pump knows that if it's below 40 degrees, it's not going to be efficient. So it would automatically call on the propane furnace. Even if this happens while you're sleeping, you set the, you set the heat uh, on heat pump, set it to 68 degrees and go night night, um, middle of the night it drops below 40 degrees, this is all automatically going to call on the furnace, keep you warm in here, just like a residential system does. And again, folks, this is a 10-year-old coach. This stuff did not exist 10 years ago. So um, Winnebago was really ahead of the game uh, on this, and it's a wonderful, wonderful system. The other benefits of it are that it is a uh, residential style system, so you can put like a residential uh, style air filter in there. Not your little piece of foam that's typically on the bottom of your air conditioners. Those don't really filter much air. I know that's a big shocker. Um, they really aren't much of a filter. This has a residential style filter back here under the bed and you can, if somebody has some allergens or anything, allergies or anything, they can actually put a HEPA style filter in there to control that as well. So wonderful feature of the uh, Winnebago heat pump air conditioner. So, um, oh, lastly, instead of having heavy things up on the roof, heavy thing is in the basement, that's better center of gravity, that's actually better handling for your Winnebago product. So a um, bunch of benefits to that system, I'm sorry to dwell on it, but it's kind of, you know, it's all coming back to me now. All right, let's move into the bathroom area here. Um, we have an open concept over here. We have the corner shower, and this is roomy. I'm gonna jump in there. And again, I'm not a small guy, but there's actually room in here. I have elbow rooms. This isn't one of those teeny tiny showers where you just soap the walls and rotate. You actually have room in here to, uh, to move around, which is good. Um, has the handheld sprayer as well. All right. Nice wood medicine cabinet. Again, adjustable shelves. Good storage in here down below. Three drawers. All right. Now, I'll we'll rotate this way. We'll step into the stool area. This is good space in here. You, again, you have enough elbow room. Um, this isn't the sexy part of selling RVs. This is the toilet. But um, folks, there's room in here to get your business done, and that's what we really all want to know. More storage up above. Have a window and a fan. So that's good. All right. And one of the things I always liked about this is just it's kind of a residential look here going into the bedroom. It's not some bifold door or some pocket door. It's actually a nice residential door, so let's go on in. All right, we have a walk-around queen bed with a sleep number. It does have its own little AM, FM, CD player over there. You have outlets on either side of the bed right underneath those sleep number controllers. You have little nightstands there that are big enough to set, say, a uh, um, cell phone on while it's charging. We do have a bed that lifts up in storage underneath. Yeah. And then this coach is really designed for 
longer term stays. If somebody wants to full time in it, this coach will do it. Look at your wardrobe space. And again, this is a gas coach, not a big $300,000 diesel pusher. Great hanging space. I love that the lights come on when you open the door. It's the little things that matter. Okay. And then six good sized drawers. You're not going to make me open every one of them, are you? Okay. All right. But they all look like that. All right. Now I will open this because I like this. Look at this. Pull out hamper. How cool is that? And another nice storage drawer. Look at the countertop space here. So um, whether you want to use this to stack extra clothes or something like that on, or, you know, this is where the makeup bag goes. Again, if you buy it, I don't care what you put there, but you can't get enough countertop space. Nice uh, TV's been updated up, up here as well, and room underneath for DVD or satellite system, whatever you want. And then look at this storage space. If I'm not mistaken, I'm 99% sure, I'm going back 10 years now to when I used to sell these, 99% sure this is prepped for the stackable washer dryer. If that's important to you, let me know, I'll have my guys check. 99%, um, I'm just, I, I want to say 100, but I, I'm going to give myself that 1% fudge factor there. All right, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana. Somebody told me to try to mention that on the video, so I, I try to listen to your comments. Any questions, don't hesitate to call me. I hope you've enjoyed this walk around on this Winnebago product. This is really nice. The nice ones don't last long. I'm not a high pressure guy. I'm not going to say buy it now or somebody else is going to. Folks, if you like it, make the decision before somebody makes the decision for you. And, and this is a wonderful unit and you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. My name is Chris Anderson. I'm with Mount Comfort RV. See you next time.